On today's show, the British mum who ended up in a Turkish prison after attempting to snatch her son. I really don't know how to describe. I was, I was terrified. Plus, Belinda stands up to be counted. I have spent money over there. People have raised funds to get over there. And I have not had no contact with my son. And Ian Lomax's story. A father parted from his son who was snatched to Greece. It was pre-planned and it was there in front of my eyes and I didn't see it. They say parents will go any lengths for their children and our next mum, Tracy Chetin, is certainly testament to that. She ended up in a Turkish prison after failing to snatch back her son Joshua from her former partner. This is Trace's story. They look like any other family relaxing on holiday, but Tracy Chetin is far from relaxed. She's waiting for an opportunity to snatch her own son. She's about to risk up to 15 years in a Turkish prison by abducting four-year-old Joshua and smuggling him back to her estranged husband, Mehmet Çetin, on the left, had at this point been wrongfully retaining Joshua in Turkey since January 2002. That's eight months ago. But the snatch failed and Tracy was arrested. This is where she ended up. I spent 10 hours in prison. That in itself... <sighs> horrifying. I really... I really don't know how to describe... I was... I was terrified. After 10 days, Tracy was released and allowed to return to England, but without Joshua. In hindsight, Tracy's mistake appears to have been to trust Mehmet. She met and married him in Turkey, where she had been working as a nanny. Within six months of going over there, I met Mehmet in a bar in Istanbul, an English bar of all sorts. Um, and we just got together from there. We got married. I think it was about 14 months later. It was in July of 97 we got married. And Joshua was actually born out in Turkey. But when the marriage fell apart, Tracy settled back in England with Joshua. Having stayed on amicable terms, Tracy didn't hesitate to allow Josh to have an extended holiday with his Turkish family in January 2002. But Mehmet had other plans. But Mehmet took Joshua out to Turkey on the proviso that Joshua would come back by September because that was when he was supposed to start school. I remember the day as clear as anything, the date, the 3rd of January. I presume that Joshua was still going to be on an extended holiday to stay with his grandparents and his dad. Mehmet phoned up within a couple of weeks and said that Joshua was not coming back till he's 11. Disbelief shock. I mean, those are some of the things I can, that went through uh, my mind. Even though Josh was born in Turkey, Hague Convention rules state that he should have been returned to the UK so that British courts could decide on who should have custody. But the process can take months, and it did. Tracy ran out of patience. However, by snatching Josh, it meant that she, not Mehmet, had broken the law. Tracy has won the custody case to bring Josh home, but Mehmet appealed and turned it into a lengthy court battle. In the 16 months that Josh had been apart from her, Tracy knows she's missed a lot. I've missed out on his first day at school, when he was, he was supposed to start school last year. His jabs, his injections, his immunisations, I don't know what he's had done there. And it's not just Mum who's missing Josh. Jeez. He's really special and I really do miss him. And he's really my best cousin.
Now, ahead of that trip and the thought of possibly bringing Josh home, Tracy's nerves are setting in. I don't want to decorate Joshua's room um, because I don't want to tempt fate. If I decorate his room, then he might not come back. Well, that's the way my mind works. Um, getting things in the cupboard for him, like special crisps and kids' food, all the food that he used to like, I don't want to do that yet because, as I say, I don't want to tempt fate. Well, what, Daddy, you give me a kiss, not you. I have no children of my own, um, so that is... That is something that I'm looking forward to with trepidation. That's the best way I can put it. Um, I'm looking forward to it a lot, but uh, you know, taking on a five-year-old boy who speaks very little English, um, who's just been separated from his father, it's going it's, it's to be difficult. I, I have no, no qualms about that at all. I know it's going to be difficult. I'm really looking forward to it. And he certainly won't be the only one. If I could send a message to Josh, I would say that he would he's my best cousin and I would do anything for him to come back. Getting back snatched children is one thing, but making sure it never happens again is entirely another. Nigat Rashid is a mum on a mission. Her son Zaim was snatched in 1998 by her former husband. And having filled out her child abduction prevention pack, they're off to the local police station to hand it in. The charity Reunite provides this pack, and the idea is to make sure that all the information, including the child's fingerprints, is at hand if a snatch occurs. It's photocopied three times for the police, the concerned parent and their lawyer. Zaim went missing for nearly two years in all, when he was four years old. And although he's preoccupied with his toys, Mum Nagat is focused on making sure this never happens again. The police aren't obliged to accept these packs, but it certainly helps parents feel safer in preventing a child snatch. Good news, South Norwood station appears to be taking things seriously. That's my number. If you do need to contact Thank me. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's go home. But just two weeks later, Nagat's paperwork was returned with a message saying there was nowhere to file it. Her child snatching ex-husband's whereabouts are still unknown. Back to Tracy Chetin, and raising press awareness is crucial because it means she gets much needed funds to travel frequently to Turkey to fight her case. So getting up at the ungodly hour of 3 a.m. to talk on a breakfast show is par for the course. Being in a new studio is daunting for anyone, but Tracy's doing well. She's done many interviews about her case before, so it gets slightly easier every time. Three minutes later and it's all over. All Tracy can hope for now is that someone out there is touched enough to offer help. Hello. Hi. The mood's a lot happier over at Reunite. Mina, with her new baby son Dre, has arrived with sister Abigail to see mum Denise Carter who runs the charity. Hello. Are you all right? There you go. You just wait here a minute because Dre and I have just got a little something for you. Shall we go and get it, Dre? Come on then. Come on. Reunite supports parents who've had their children snatched. A distressing ordeal all round, so any opportunities, such as celebrating a birthday, are very welcome. Happy birthday, Dre. Oh. There you go, there from Dre. Have a good look at it. Thank you, Dre. Mwah! There we go. See, there Aww. you go, Mummy. And he's written you a nice card. Oh, from Mummy. Isn't it? Abigail is the reason Denise joins Reunite after fighting her ex husband for custody after he wrongfully retained Abigail in America. Oh, to the best mummy in the world. Yeah. And she is, oh. Alicia. Oh, yes, she is. 
Coming up after the break, Tracy takes time out to support another British mum with a son in Turkey. Plus a father's story, Ian Lomax trying to rebuild his life without his snatch son, Christopher. Helen came on the phone and said she's not coming home. And Christopher's not coming back ever. Still to come, two British mums affected by child snatching support each other. We laugh when we're nervous as well, don't we? But is anyone listening to Belinda? I have spent money over there, people have raised for us to get over there, and I have not had no contact with my son. But first, Ian Lomax's son was snatched from right under his nose. Christopher, aged seven at the time, was snatched in August 1998 by his Greek ex-wife, Helen. Now remarried to Susie, Ian will never forget the family holiday in Greece that changed his life forever. She took him the day after his birthday, and two days before I was going back. And uh, Helen came on the phone and said she's not coming home. And Christopher's not coming back ever. And I, I just couldn't focus on what she was saying. I was just in total shock. And then the phone went down. Then uh, the mother-in-law just got hold of my clothes from his suitcase and kicked me out and said, you'll never see your wife and child again, and that's, that's when it really hit me then. Leaving Ian with his Greek in-laws while she took Christopher out for the day was all part of Helen's year-long plan. Looking back now, there were signs that she was going to take him. She was a bit quiet, apprehensive, a bit emotional. When we arrived at the house, I was in the bedroom and I noticed the door was slightly ajar and she was taking things out of the suitcase and was whispering. And I thought, there's something going on. You know, I wish now that I'd uh, checked the suitcase, you know, all the children's clothes. I know now, you know, it was pre-planned and it was there in front of my eyes and I didn't see it. Denise Carter from the charity Reunite knew that Ian's ex-wife wasn't happy in Britain. But I think she was feeling very lonely and isolated and wanted to go home. So they decided to go off for a holiday to, to visit her parents. And while she was out there, she decided that she wasn't going to be returning back to the UK. We tried to contact Ian's ex-wife over in Greece to hear her side of the story. She was very pleasant, but didn't want to take part in the programme. So the reason as to why she decided to snatch Christopher, to leave Ian to travel back to the UK alone, remains a mystery for now. <laughs> And the journey home is something Ian will never forget. It's difficult to explain the emotions at the time, but it was hard, very hard to come to one holiday with a wife and child and then to come back with 26. I stayed at my mum for six weeks, I couldn't come back in the house. I couldn't face seeing his clothes on the chair or his photographs on the wall. It was very, very difficult. Now Ian's rebuilding his life, which includes new baby Emma Louise but letting go of the past has been hard. When he was abducted, I left the room as it was, his clothes, his school uniform, everything. And it, you know, I just got up one morning and just ripped all the wallpaper off and just decorated the wall. And I used to think, if I did that, I'm going to forget him and he's, he's always never been here. But you have to... Move on. Move, not move on, but look forward. But travelling over to see Christopher is proving a costly, if necessary, expense. I have nightmares a lot, worrying that um, one day I could lose my job or, you know, I have no money to go and see him and it's frightening. Thinking that I can never afford to go to Greece and see my son is frightening. So every penny, every penny I have, I never spend on myself, do I? No, everything goes on everything to Greece goes all the time. Greece, Greece, Greece. It's one of the main reasons why I'm going back to work, is so that we've got more money for here as well, but so we can save to go to Greece because it's costing us thousands and thousands of pounds every year 
And there's another baby now to think about. And they should be treated equally. So much so that Ian nearly missed the birth of his daughter to please Christopher. Susie was in hospital at the time, waiting to be induced of the child. And Christopher was very feeling left out. He was getting very emotional, so I had to take that decision to go to Greece to calm him down, to feel as though I wasn't going to abandon him. But I also took that risk. I could have missed the birth, but I had to take that decision. But luckily enough, I was back the day before baby was born. Ian's been granted open access in Greece to see Christopher for the main summer and festive holidays, but he can't take him out of the country. After you've been going over after a while, and then he starts hitting you saying goodbye to him, and that's very, very hard. I want him to come to England, you know, for holidays. If he wants to come back and live, he can live. Ian dropped all kidnapping charges against his ex-wife, but he can't drop the memories. It's also very hard because his school is only on the corner and I see his school friends more or every day until I go to work. And it's hard. It's hard, you know, you never forget. There's never a day goes by without thinking about Christopher and why she'd done it. I used to always blame myself. But I know I was a good father and a decent person. And uh, I have to keep going, not just for my wife and any of the ways, but for Christopher. I have to be there for him if he ever needs me. Anything else? I've got his present from I need to, uh, Anne Louise to Christopher. Uh, I need to put my video camera. And now the family are preparing to fly out once again so that Christopher can see his new baby sister. Got my diary so I can write everything what goes on. I keep doing so. Uh -huh. I write everything down. Every time I make a phone call, isn't it? Every time I go to Greece, I record everything. So if anything ever happened to me, Susie's going to show him that I was always there for him, that I, how much I loved him and the emotions and the pain I was going through, and also the happy times that we've been together in Greece. Conferences on parental child snatching are on the increase. Today's meeting is highlighting the problem to Leicester's Islamic community, particularly as abductions between couples of different faiths and cultures happens a lot. I would suggest that anyone entering into a relationship needs to do it with their eyes open. If they're entering into a relationship with someone of another culture or faith, then be aware that at some point, particularly if a child comes into the equation, that issues as to how that child is brought up need to be explored. Belinda Chapman Serce's former husband was a Turkish Muslim, and he snatched their son Gian back there nearly three years ago. She hasn't seen him since. Since my son has been in Turkey, I have come up battles and battles that people don't take my rights as a mother seriously. I've been up to that country three times. I've been given the rights to bring my son back to England. The police have seen my son in May last year. In November, I was granted the rights to bring Jihan home. I've never spoken to my son or seen what he looks like, yet they have contact with his father. He hides. They allow him still to appeal. So why aren't they helping me? Why are, the, why are the police ignoring my issues in that country as a mother? Why isn't enough being done to reunite me and my son, to spend some time, even an hour, with my son? I've had no contact. I appreciate the Muslim culture as my son lived in England. He was treated as a Muslim by his father, and I had great respect for him and his father. But if the Quran says no child under the age of 10, it's, it should be with child, any child should see its mother anyway, why haven't they assisted me while I've been over in that country? They don't even know who I am. I, I fully appreciate your point, and I'm sorry, I, you know, I mean, it's a specific uh, situation, and I, I can't give you any answer. All I can say that from an Islamic perspective, it is not acceptable for these things to happen. I have spent money over there, people have raised for us to get over there, and I have not had no contact with my son. And this is a religion, a Muslim religion, that I have respected. And yet when I go over there, I get no respect for the But I think you have to understand, you have to be able to differentiate between the religion and the actions of people. And your husband is that. doing this to hurt and to... Yes, he is. And but it's for his own selfish end. He's and can helped. I also say that there was a programme... The next day, it's clear Belinda's losing her direction. So Tracy Chetin, her mum in the same predicament, decides to meet up with her for a coffee. It's well needed as Belinda's about to fly out to Turkey for yet another court appearance for custody of Gian. You don't have a point of going to Venice, Tracy, because, mm. you know, at the end of the day, they're not even going to, they're not going to even want to know who I am. The reason you go is for your own benefit, for your own peace of mind. Um, and if you're there and he's not, 
then they can see that you've made the effort, you are his mum, and you're determined, you want to get him back. I know, I've got to cry a few, a few more tears before, before I get there. Just remember, when you do this, this is, this, this is for Jihan, is to get, to get him back and, and have him with you. Yeah. So you can, you can give him a cuddle and sniff his hair and... and, and see what he looks like. <laughs> it's, it's every time I see a child, I'm like, inquisitive. Oh, how old is your son? When was he born? Tracy's son Josh was retained by his father whilst on holiday, but she's won the last legal stage to get him back, so she knows that Belinda must not lose hope. No, just, just, just persevere, or just be there, because for me it did me the world of good. Hoping to do some good in her case is South London mum Catherine Hodgson. She's getting ready to do her first ever TV appeal in her fight to find son Luca. He was snatched by his Italian father when he was just two years old in 1997. But she's really nervous about how she should look. I don't know what to wear. I've been through everything and the sporty, casual, or I don't know, maybe conservative. I don't know. I don't know what to wear at all. I think maybe something a bit more conservative. After a few nervous starts, she gets it right. My name is Catherine Hodgson, and I'm appealing to you to help me find my son, Luca. He was two when I last saw him. His Italian father took him for a short break from me, and I haven't seen him since. Coming up on the next Child Snatchers. I'll be thinking of you. It's mixed fortunes for Belinda and Tracy. It's we're good so news for one quiet, and though. awful news for the other. <laughs> we're laughing, we're nervous. Well, <laughs> Both mums have sons over in Turkey, but which child will be reunited with their mother? And we catch up with Josephine Bromley as she heads off to the Middle East to see her snatched daughters. Mm.